Good evening, I'm Faye Barker. This is ITV News London. In a city still living in the shadow of the Grenfell disaster, it was a terrifying scene in Poplar today. The 8th, 9th and 10th floors of a 19-storey tower block burned throughout the morning and more than 40 people suffered the effects of smoke inhalation before fire crews managed to bring the fire under control. The tower was evacuated. But then another disturbing detail emerged. Parts of the building were covered in the same type of cladding that was found to be a factor in the fire at Grenfell. Katie Barnfield reports. These are pictures no one wanted to see again. Flames climbing up a London tower block, a block still covered in the same type of flammable cladding as Grenfell Tower. I was in bed uh, this morning when I heard a furious knock, you know, um, and I, when I went down to open the door, there was uh, smoke. Manish lives on the eighth floor of New Providence Wharf, next door to where the fire started. When we got out of the building, we could see that there was pretty heavy smoke on the eighth floor. And in about a matter of minutes, we could then start seeing flames spread to the ninth and the 10th floor as well. The rate at which it was spreading was really alarming. As evacuated residents gathered at a nearby hotel, watching firefighters try and dampen the flames, they couldn't hide their anger. Grenfell's happened. Let's pay respect to the people who died for God's sake. You know, they, we don't want them to die in vain. Yasmin chairs the residence group and says they've been begging for years for the cladding to be removed. And while they wait, they're paying £47,000 a month for a waking watch to patrol the building. And it's obvious waking watch does not work. I've had a very close friend and I was trying to reassure her about her cladding and I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. She had a heart attack on Thursday. It's the stress of living in this cladding. At the height of the fire, 125 firefighters were trying to get it under control. But residents on floors underneath it said their fire alarms didn't go off. We did not hear a single beep of fire alarm within the flat, in the corridor, and the, the fire compartment door, which, which I know shuts automatically when, when they're supposed to, the fire alarm goes on because they do testing sometimes. None of that happened, right? It was, just, it was just wide open. If my mom wasn't here to wake me up, I probably, I would have still been sleeping for at least another 30 minutes, which is quite scary. The building owners, Ballymore Group, were one of 14 firms called out by the government in January for failing to remove flammable cladding. The group told us replacement of the cladding was underway, with work due to start on Monday. We have had incidents where fire does spread above a floor. Um, we recognise that this has got cladding that is very similar to Grenfell. Uh, we have got our fire investigation teams and our fire safety teams looking at this, this building and, and the uh, procedures that have been put in place. Two people have been taken to hospital and one firefighter was injured. Many who live here say it could have been so much worse. Katie Barnfield, ITV News. Well, in response to today's fire, the government said tonight the building has received £8 million in government funding to remove unsafe ACM cladding. Ministers have met Ballymore repeatedly to urge action. They say we're spending £5 billion to fully fund the replacement of all unsafe cladding. Now to the race to be Mayor of London. And although the election result won't be announced until tomorrow or even Sunday, early indications are that this could be a much closer contest than opinion polls had suggested. It boils down to a two-horse race between Labour's Sadiq Khan and the Conservative Sean Bailey. Well, meanwhile, results for the London Assembly constituencies started to come in this evening. The first saw the Conservatives hold on to the West Central seat. Rita Begum, Labour and Cooperative Party, 52,938. Tony Devonish, Conservative Party candidate, 55,163. Well, as I mentioned, we'll be getting the full results over the weekend. Our political correspondent, Simon Harris, reports now on how the count's been different this year. The opinion polls predicted a comfortable win for Sadiq Khan, but as
counting got underway, it looked as if the race was much closer. Olympia was one of three election hubs where COVID security was the order of the day. Screens helped enforce social distancing, ballot papers were handled with gloves and there were half as many staff as usual. We know that COVID restrictions are likely to mean that we'll be a little bit slower, um, but the important thing is that the count is undertaken safely, accurately, and we get the results in as timely a fashion as we're able to. That timely fashion means it'll take at least two days. In this election, London is divided into 14 constituencies, each one represented by a member of the London Assembly. Today, ballot papers from seven of them were being counted. The other half will be done tomorrow. Labour sources nervously reported a low turnout at some polling stations yesterday, which could favour the Conservatives. From initial figures, turnout, I think, will be lower than 2016, which is worrying because generally we do find that across London anyway, that turnout can sometimes have an impact on Labour voters. But throughout the day, we saw steady but slow turnout. People used to talk about the donut in London. So central London tends to be very heavily Labour and outer London is much more conservative. And I think broadly speaking, uh, that still holds. But in a low turnout election, which the mayoral election invariably is, it's rare to get anywhere near 50% of people turning out. That makes the result more unpredictable. Tonight, Labour hopes of Sadiq Khan winning an outright majority in the first round were fading. Second preference votes will now be crucial. All the evidence as of this moment is Sadiq Khan is still likely to win. He was well ahead in the polls. The polls have not been wrong ever before. And from what voting figures we can see up to this minute, it looks as if the Labour vote is still coming out in broadly numbers it did before, perhaps the Conservatives similarly. Vote counting in City Hall elections has a troubled history. Technical hitches and delays are not unusual. Add Covid to this one and the final result won't be before tomorrow at the earliest. Simon Harris, ITV News. A woman whose body was found in bushes at the side of a village green in Romford earlier this week is believed to have been murdered. Police say Maria Jane Rawlins may have been attacked after she left a hospital appointment on Monday evening. The 45-year-old from Chelmsford was a mother of two daughters. A 16-year-old boy has been charged with the murder of a father of four in Essex. 34-year-old James Gibbons was stabbed to death outside his home in Laindon near Basildon on Sunday. He'd spent the day celebrating the birthday of his twin daughters. His family said they were broken beyond belief. Now, an independent inquiry into squalid and dangerous housing conditions in a Croydon tower block has found the council failed in its duty to keep tenants safe. The report follows an ITV News investigation which uncovered families living in flats with severe leaks, mould and damp for more than four years. The inquiry said the council's housing department was incompetent and staff lacked care and respect for tenants. I don't understand how this just could happen for so long and they're clueless about it. You're supposed to be here to help the people and support them and do all of these things and you can't do that and you've left us to just suffer and now you're gonna tell us that, okay, you're gonna change. Change don't happen overnight. Finally, brightening up the streets of South East London in a very artistic way is the Lewisham School of Muralism. The first of its kind in the UK, it's partners students with local artists to create neighbourhood murals that bring colour to the streets. Their aim is to create art which is striking and accessible and delivers powerful messages. If you'd like to take a look at this one, it is next to Lewisham Shopping Centre. Right, let's get the weather now. Here's Chris Page. Great Western Railway sponsors the ITV London Weekend Weather. Hello there. Very good evening to you. Today across the capital there's been a lot of sunshine around, some fair weather cloud and just the odd isolated shower but for the weekend it's going to turn fairly wet during the day on Saturday, the first day of the weekend, drier by the afternoon and actually drier still on Sunday and warmer for all of us as well. Something we've not seen for quite some time and that's thanks to an area of low pressure. Yes, it brings the outbreaks of rain during Saturday, but that clears and we start to see the warmth pumping its way in from the south and the west. Something we haven't seen for yes, quite some time. 
As we go through this evening and overnight, it is dry out there at the moment, clear skies around, but the cloud will start to roll in by dawn tomorrow morning and we're starting to see the sea of blue too. That's the weather front showing its hand. A very wet grey start to Saturday morning. The wind's beginning to strengthen as well. Could be seeing gusts 20, maybe 25 miles an hour. It does clear by around lunchtime, so a drier afternoon, but still some legacy cloud, but a milder feeling day. Temperatures 15 to 17 degrees. By Sunday, the rain has cleared off the scene. Something bright Lighter for all of us and drier and also a touch warmer tea. Good night. Great Western Railway sponsors the ITV London weekend weather. That's it. We're back tomorrow evening at quarter to seven, hopefully with some more election results for you. Until then, bye bye.